Hello everyone. So today we are going to be looking at Azure Queue service. So I'll be sharing my screen now. So when we started this series of um, storage accounts, I mentioned that we have four categories of storage services within Azure storage account. We started with um, blob container, we also looked at table storage, and we are looking at the third one now, the third service, which is the queue service. So I opened my storage account. I, from the left navigation, I went to queues. Um, so before I really start around this, um, let me just give a little bit of explanation around what queues really are. So I have my background in computer science and I can remember in my early days of programming, um, we were required to write algorithms that perform um, key operations. And I remember that one thing that was very common with queues that made it different from stacks and other um, type of similar um, stacks is that in the case of queues, we have first in, first out. So the first item to be added into a collection is usually the first to come out. So that is that about queue. And it also mimics what we have in real life. I mean, if you are in a queue and you arrive there before someone else, you are usually the one that would be answered to first. So let's just see how it's been done on the Azure portal. Then I will give some more real life examples to what it is really used for. Then we look at a little lab session using Visual Studio. Then we would end um, this particular um, video there. But we also have in subsequent videos, we are going to be um, looking at different operations that we can be doing on the queue service. So I want to add a new queue. So I give it a name. Um, I can call it second queue because we have um a queue there already. So why that is being added, so I can open it. Then, as you can see, there are no messages here. One thing that makes this queue service different from the blob and the um and uh, what's it called? The blob and the table storage is that in this case we are looking at messages. What we are really adding to queues to the queue are really messages rather than actual um storage data. However, the queue has a way of referencing data, referencing um, storage data. And we are going to be seeing some of that very soon. So let me add a message. So let's say this is the first message. Then it expires, um, let's leave it as seven days. We encode. Oh. And we can add a second message. Yeah, we can add a second message. This is the second message and so let's add one more. Third message. Yeah, so as I said earlier on, um, in the case of queues, we have two major operations that we have when it comes to um, the queue data structure is we can add content to the queue, which in programming terms, they call that enqueuing. So we are enqueuing data into a queue. 
Then if we are removing a message from a queue, we are dequeuing data from the queue. So what I just did now is to enqueue messages, the first, second, and the third message, and now we want to dequeue. So if I should dequeue, one of these messages will go out. And as I said earlier on, um, this data structure, one thing that um, for the rest of my life, I would always remember about queues is first in, first out. We call it FIFO, F-I-F-O. So because this was the first message to be enqueued, ordinarily it should be the first to come out. So if I should dequeue, yeah, the first message is out. If I dequeue again, the second message is out. And I can also choose to clear the queue. So I'm removing all of them. Um, I'm dequeuing all the messages. So we also have that out of our queue. So with that, um, that's how we can add messages and that's how we can remove messages. However, um, this usually, we don't interact with queues from the portal. We usually do it through Visual Studio. And I'll be um, shedding some more light around this very soon. So before we actually do that, let me add the message again. So let me add, um, let me say this is the fourth message. I want to explain some of the properties over here. So we have an ID that uniquely identifies this queue. We have a message text, which is the content of that enqueued data. Then we have an insertion time. That's the time at which the message was inserted into the queue. Then we can also specify an expiry date. That's at that time, the queue, I mean, the item that we added will be um, deleted. Then we have the queue count. This can be a little bit confusing, but it really isn't. So anytime we dequeue a message, especially when we are using Visual Studio, when we dequeue a message from a queue, um, it's actually not being deleted. It's actually hidden. It's hidden. So it's possible that we can try to, or probably another application or something, and there's usually a visibility period. So when that visibility period is expired, it's possible for another application to try to dequeue the message again. So if that happens again, the dequeue count will increase. So that's why there's a dequeue count here. So that is that about that. So um, let's go to Visual Studio now. I've been talking a lot. So let's go to Visual Studio and we'll see how we can do some of these things from Visual Studio. So I'll, I'll be working with the first queue. Let me confirm that it's empty. So there's nothing here. There's no message here. So I'll stop sharing now. And now I will be sharing my Visual Studio. Yeah, so we are on Visual Studio now. This is a very simple program that I um, put together. So when we are working with queues, we need to import our library, azure.storage.queues, which we have over here. Then um, when it comes to um, initializing the queue client, this is something we've done. We worked with it in table storage. We also worked with it when we were um working with blob containers also still the same process the only difference is the class name so previously we use service clients then we use service blob clients now we are using q clients and um we are um calling this cons this constructor method 
and we are passing in the connection string that we got from the storage account, the storage account connection string, and the queue name. So this is the queue name here, the queue name from Azure portal. So this is assuming that the queue is already created. So we want to send messages to the queue. So that's why we are using this array here. So if um if this queue exists, so if this queue exists, then this message that was initialized over here, we are assigning it to message um the uh, the uh, the queue number of first queue service because um this is static because that's the name of the queue. Then we also send that message to the Azure portal. So we are sending the message. So this send message method is from the azure.storage.queues. And we are calling it using this underscore client object that we initialize from the queue client. So we are passing the message. So for um so from this we you can see that this is going to work five times. So we are sending multiple um messages to our first queue service. So I'll be running this program without wasting much time and I'll be sharing my screen. So let me share my um the output screen so that you will see what the output looks like. Yeah, so you can see all the messages have been sent. So we are going to confirm this if this is truly the case from the Azure portal. So let me stop sharing. And I will share, I will go back to my Edge browser. Yeah, so you can see the first queue, it was empty. I will refresh now and if everything works as it should, then we should see our messages over here, our multiple messages. So I'm refreshing and we can see it now, the five messages. So that's because we, our, um, the loop starts from zero and moves to less than five, which is four. So you can see our five messages over here. So we can obviously dequeue. Yeah, and you can see the message has been taken out. So we can dequeue. Yeah, so I just wanted us to see um this video um this short video on the initial um aspects to working with the queue service so um i will be giving a more real life example in our next session in our next video i just wanted us to be comfortable with the queue service i would have done that now but i do not want this video to be too long so I'll stop here. So have a nice day.